Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and I'm back again with another fun light up card. This one is a box card that I turned into a coffee shop and it's part of the Coffee Loving Card Makers blog hop. We've got a coupon this week for free gel pens on orders over $25. Um, the details are down below and also in the blog. But let me show you the card that I'm making. This one, I love the way this turned out. I think it's really fun. Uh, the theme for the hop is obviously coffee related, but it's also for fall and winter. And so I used some warm colors. I thought this looks like a, a warm fall coffee shop scene. Um, and I had a lot of fun putting it together. So I'll show you what I used. Uh, first up are our easy lights. And if you haven't seen these before, they're very simple to use. They have three lights at the end of the wires. You're gonna want a little stamp that says push. I used my favorite things um, dies for the rest of this in stamps. That is their outside the box box card set. I also grabbed a two inch circle that I used to cut the sign that goes on the box card just so that it would round the edges. And then all of these are goodies out of the recent coffee, I think it was called a coffee shop box. It's a kit from my favorite things. All of the pieces are sold individually as well. So I'll link everything down below for you. But I just went ahead and cut out all the pieces off, off screen. They're all just out of different colors of cardstock and that brick pattern. If you did get the kit, then you have these fun little ideas. Of course, if you didn't, there's always Instagram. <laughs> um, and then you're, you're gonna need some vellum too. Uh, that, that's gonna have the light shining through it. So I'm gonna walk you through the parts real quick. We're gonna do the bar first, and it has two long strips, or two wide strips, sorry, and two skinny strips. One is the top of the bar and one is the bottom, and then those other little pieces are like the extra edging. They do have uh, rounded corners in one edge more than the other, and they are slightly different thicknesses. Um, so you, you get all the dies that you need, but just kind of match up the rounded edges. And when you cut the big die itself, it it embosses those edges for you, so it's very easy to line up. And you can use whatever colors you want. I just went with sort of craft and then one darker brown for the top of the bar. I wanted that to be the countertop. For the chair, I think this is really cool. My house is mid-century modern, so when I saw these chairs, I decided I needed this kit no matter what. Because <laughs> they remind me of mid-century. Uh, they're very simple to piece together. It has sort of a boomerang shape that goes on top of a rounded triangle and then that just goes on top of the legs. It also comes with this T and a longer strip to make a table. So I just did that two-toned. Um, again that same darker brown that I used for the the bar top and then a, a medium shade for the the legs of the table and the the chair. And then it comes with this really fun little set so that you can make a signboard, like an A-frame sign for out front. I went ahead and stamped already. I just It's just white embossed on black cardstock. And then I sandwiched that on top of the um, dark brown cardstock there. They go together very simply. I just Sometimes you get these sets and you don't necessarily know what the pieces are. So I wanted to show you how I piece these together. Uh, two plants and the pots, again, simple. And I just cut all of these out of scraps of cardstock. I didn't even add any shading. I do really like to color my own die cuts, but this time I, I thought I'd keep it simple. Now for the light, I trimmed it down a little bit. You can see there's one full sized one, but it just felt a little bit big for the scene that I was creating. So I trimmed the top of that light just a little bit. And then I'm gonna stick it on top of one of those little brass pieces. There's a cool set that has all these industrial finishes. And then there's a circle. I cut that from vellum and I colored it with a Copic marker, just yellow so that the light would glow a little more yellow. And I'm just kind of piecing it together. We'll cut off the top, so don't worry. Um, for the coffee machines, uh, it comes with an espresso machine and also a regular coffee machine. And so I was putting it together. I don't actually end up using the espresso machine on this card because it ended up feeling too crowded, but I'm going to show you how I assemble it because I know I will use it on a future card because it's really cool. Um, but I just kind of, I cut, the one die cuts out all of the bits and pieces, so I cut it out a couple times from different colors, and then now I have extras in my stash to assemble a whole variety of espresso machines. But... I'm just going to show you how I piece it together. So we've got the top there. There's one skinnier little piece to go along the bottom. 
there we are so far. I'm gonna add the little, I think that's like a bean funnel that goes at the top. I should probably know the bits and pieces better, but I don't. <laughs> um, and then I've got that little red dot that I'm gonna put right in the middle. And when I cut this out, it embosses um, the circle in the center, and then it also embosses two little circles on either side of the red dot. So I cut out another piece from vellum, and then I'm just gonna use a 16th inch hole punch, and I'm gonna punch those embossed little holes there so that I can have um, the vellum behind it and light shine through there. But like I said, I don't end up using it on this card. <laughs> but when you see this on a future card, you'll know how I put it together. So I'm just going to punch those four holes. And you see me kind of wiggling it around because it's, it's a small piece, so I kind of have to, to make sure that the punch doesn't grab it. There we go. And then that piece of vellum is already die cut with the same die as well. So it embosses the holes there, so I know where to color the green and the red dots. There we go. And then I'll bring in a light here, just let's see if we can see it. I'm not sure that it shows up on camera, but in person you really can see the uh, red and the green coming through here. Oh, I went ahead and glued it on real quick. And then let's see. So you can kind of see on camera here how those the lights come through. In person it comes through really nicely. And I did just um, add a little more color to the back side of the vellum just so that we can really make it more vibrant. But that will be for a future card. <laughs> so let's work on the coffee pot that actually goes onto this card. So it, I cut it out of red and then I just drew a little like a line above the, the dot where the um, silver button is gonna go. And I've got a slot punch. This is, it cuts out like a rectangle. I've had it in my stash. I don't know, for a long time. You could use a smaller circle if you wanted, but I thought it would be a little more interesting to have um, a slot where it's kind of red on the bottom and green on the top, almost like a toggle switch. So I've got another piece of vellum there and I'm just gonna color red and green on either side of it. And then I can tape or glue that to the back of my coffee pot here or a coffee machine. Coffee maker. <laughs> all the words. You know, my husband actually brews coffee or he roasts his own coffee beans and then we brew it fresh every morning. And apparently I have not had enough today. <laughs> but all right, so that one just goes together just like that. And then it comes with the carafe and there's a little tiny piece I cut from black to go along the bottom. And then that curved piece will be the handle. I'll glue that along the top. I enjoy piecing die cuts like this. I think this is a lot of fun. And this set has a ton of really cool little pieces for inside your coffee shop. So um, I've already gone and done all that. And now that we've got all of our little bits put together, let's work on the box card itself. If you haven't played with this, this is MFT's, I think it's called Outside the Box box card. And I cut um, two of the back pieces, those golden ovals, and then there are decorative pieces. One I've already stamped. I'm going to glue that to the back there. For the side pieces, I cut the white subway tile um, for both the inside and the outside, because you'll see a little bit of it from, from the inside of the card since I only have one uh, spacer bar going across. So I'm just decorating both sides before we start assembling. And you can see it's going to get glued on to the uh, left side here. And that is the back layer. The front layer will we'll put the lights on before we put it all in there. And I realized I shouldn't have glued the inside piece all the way down because I want to hide the seam of the front piece. So I'm going to put the subway tile that goes across the very front and then I'll fold that up here. And then I can add some glue to the side that's going to tuck underneath where I peeled it up. And I realized this wasn't all the way straight and exactly where I wanted it. So I fixed that real quick. That's why I like wet glue. It gives me the wiggle time. So a little bit of glue on that tab. And then I can put it underneath and line that up. And then I can glue that on top there. And then we'll go ahead and do the next side. And I'll learn my lesson before I <laughs> before I glue all of the decorative pieces on. I can 
attach the golden pieces together. And I'm just kind of making sure that it lines up straight as I go, that the bottom is a straight edge all the way across. Because we do have that wiggle room, we can um, adjust it if we need to. And I've got the inside and the outside. So we'll do the outside first here. And then we can put our decorative piece inside. And you may have noticed that I cut those inside pieces wrong. <laughs> I had the direction going the wrong way. But I don't think anybody notices. You probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out. And I'm just going to just gonna go with it. And you can kind of see how the card will fully assemble. But before we glue the, the back in and the bridge across, we want to decorate those. So I'm bringing in all my pieces here. And I just kind of play with them. This is where I realize that it's it's too many things. I'm going to use my easy light with three lights, and I wanted each coffee maker and then the light bulb to light up, but I realized it was just too too crowded. So I'm just saving the espresso machine for something else. So what I'm going to do here is just glue my sign on. That was um, embossed with white powder onto a black sheet of cardstock, and then I trimmed it with that two inch circle that I showed you at the beginning and cut the bottom off. For the strut, the center piece that goes across, I'm gonna put the plant and the table and chair. And then we can kind of, I'm, I'm doing that so that I kind of have all my pieces ready before we um, actually assemble the box. But this way it'll kind of give me an idea of how high up I can put the other pieces on the bar. So I wanted to have this one done first. And I'm just gluing it on here, it's very simple. Now we can work on the background of above the bar. So it cuts out, there's a, a shelf in there, I cut that out of a dark brown, the same I think. I think that's the brown that's the the table legs and the chair legs, so it's sort of the medium brown. And then I'm gonna line up my coffee pot and my light just so I have an idea of where I want the plant to go in between. And I'll glue that onto the shelf. Everything is flat so far. But in a minute, we're gonna use some foam tape. So I'm kind of lining things up here and I wanna see um, where my light is going to sit. So you see me kind of arranging everything here, making sure that the table heights are all in a good place so that they're not hiding everything. And then now I can move the coffee pot and just put a little pencil dot where I'm gonna have the light itself come through. And I'll do the same thing for the light bulb. I like that little brass chandelier there or copper I think it's I cut that from copper paper and apparently I overthought that a whole lot <laughs> so I put my little dot there and now I can move those things out of the way and I'll bring in that 16th inch hole punch again you can use a just a pokey tool here as well either way you just want a little dot so that the lights can come through and then we're going to line up where the um the button will be and you can see this is my easy light it has three lights on there I only need two because I ended up saving the, um, the espresso machine for another card so I'm just gonna cut one off and I'm careful only to cut the one light off I didn't cut the other two otherwise they wouldn't work <laughs> um, so I just cut those off and it, it's trash now I'm, I'm not gonna use it for anything else um, if you wanted to use it for something else you maybe could but it, it's kind of a pain in the butt okay so now I'm gonna mark where I want to thread my wires through and I'm just I grabbed that slot punch again but it, you could use the the other punch if you wanted and just kind of make it a little bit bigger I'm threading those um, two lights through the back there and then I'm just going to line the end up over each hole and tape it down so this way my light is in place where the holes are and that's just regular old scotch tape you can use any tape it doesn't matter and I'm trimming away the extra tape there I am careful not to cut the wires like I said if you cut the those wires they, it won't work <laughs> so be careful I'm gonna use some double stick tape and I'm just gonna tape the easy light the bottom there in place 
And then I have these extra lengths of wire here and I'm just gonna curl them up and I want to gently curl them. You don't want any sharp bends. Um, if, you, if you make too sharp of a bend, you could crack the wire inside and then it may not work. Now I can go ahead and glue this to the back golden piece there. And let's see, I think I pushed the button here so you can see. So my two lights are in place and now we're just going to start covering everything up before we close up the box. I do want to use double thick foam tape um, that elevates, the, it creates some distance between the vellum and the light bulb itself and makes the whole thing glow. If you glued the vellum right on top of the dot, just flat on top with no space in between, you'll just get a dot of light that comes through the vellum in, in kind of a hot spot. But if you elevate it and give it a little bit of space, that gives the light room to kind of bounce around before it comes through. So I try to, to create space between the vellum whenever I can. If it's a real small piece of vellum, it's probably not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. But for for anything that's a little bit bigger, quarter inch or so. Um, even with the coffee pot, because that's a, a slot there, um, I want to say it's it's probably a quarter of an inch long, maybe three eighths of an inch long. So I wanted to give it space for the light to bounce around. And now I'm going to line this up and get the, the coffee pot or the coffee machine over that light there. Make sure that the light is in the right place and that the bottom is straight across my bar. And I like that. Now I need to mark where my button is. So you saw me put a little pencil mark at the bottom of my bar. And I'm going to grab my little push stamp. I'm going to line it up here in my misty. When I pick it up in the lid, I'm going to erase that pencil mark now. And then I can stamp over it. And this is just black ink. You will see it from underneath. Um, a lot of times I do like a color that'll blend in more. I went with black because it is kind of down low and hidden. And now I'm going to bring in my double thick foam tape and I'm just going to kind of put it around on the bar here in a couple spots. I'm making sure to leave that gap so that I don't put any foam tape on top of the light. And I'm just going to check it, make sure that everything's good, and it is. So I can peel up my release paper and put the bar down here. And I'm lining it up with my coffee shop, or sorry, coffee pot there. <laughs> There's a lot of coffee in this. All right, so I need to add my little coffee pot now, the carafe. And another piece of that double thick foam tape, just so that it's coming out at the same elevation as the pot and the bar, or as the machine and the bar. There we go. And now we can put the, um, the box together. So I'm going to put the center strut in and I want to kind of line things up, see how high I want it to come up. If I brought it up too high, then we'd, we'd kind of cover the back bar, but I want it just sort of at the bottom of the, the white subway tile there. So I'm lining it up and gluing it down on one side. Again, I like this wet glue because it gives me wiggle room. And after I have one side in place, then I'm going to glue the back on here, but I want to be able to slip the other end in here. So I'm kind of leaving a little bit with no glue on the right side there. And I'll just line it up, stick it down. I'm going to add glue to that tab and I won't glue in the center piece just yet because it's a little too much to, to handle all at once. I can slide that in, make sure it's all lined up. And then now I can add glue to that other piece. Otherwise it's kind of a lot to, uh, it's a lot of things to juggle at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of move that around till I get it right. And I do like to go back and forth both sides with a box cart and make sure I have it lined up correctly. And I'll just hold it until the glue sets. There is a little bit more decorating to do. I'm going to glue the the top of the light down so that I can trim it off. And then I've got that front little signboard that I need to put on there. 
And then I grabbed a few of the die cut coffee cups. I didn't show you assembling them or anything because there is no assembly. They, they cut out ready to go. Um, so I went ahead and attached a few of those, some to the top of the shelf that we have the plant on, one to the coffee table in the front or the, yeah, the, the table in the front. <laughs> and then I put like a little creamer and another cup with foam tape so they kind of are at bar height and sticking out the same level and then I've got one more cup that I put on the back just for fun and then that finishes up our card so here's a look at it when you press the buttons and everything I think this is a really fun little card great for coffee lovers it's a nice birthday card so it can be a little special here and it glows nicely and you can see with our easy lights you can cut off any extra ones if you're doing headlights or something like that where you need two lights and not just one you have that option so all of the details are on the blog don't forget we have a coupon if you enter the code coffee this week you'll get a free set of gel pens if your order is over $25 if you're new to the channel feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell and I'll have a few more videos for you. Don't forget to head on over to the blog though because my friend Jen is sharing another light up card and it's in the same post. Thanks for watching.